Welcome to Extraterrestrial Reality. Uh, today I want to just uh, talk about my, the people who follow my channels on, on YouTube and on Spotify. I want to say thank you very much. There's been a, I've received a lot of supportive comments uh, over the past couple of weeks, ever since I presented uh, the scientific evidence as uh, presented by Scott Roeder, uh, the crime scene reconstruction expert, as well as his assistant, Luis Castillo, that shows that there was alien creatures in the backyard of the Kenmore family uh, last year on May 1st, during the early morning hours of May 1st, uh, 2023. And I, I, you know, of course, I've, I've been talking about there have been some people, I, I've gotten some hate, but uh, for the most part, I've received a lot of uh, uh, positive comments. And I, I want to say I really appreciate it. And I've also received some comments from people uh, and emails uh, from people who are uh, requesting like how come I'm not trying to do more about this and I just want to you know put it out there that I am I'm trying to get this word out there because I know that my my channels are very small I, I only have I have less than 3,000 subscribers on YouTube right now and uh, I have about 7,000 on Spotify uh, and so that's basically 10 I mean I'm, some of them are probably some followers I'm sure are probably subscribing to both of them so I don't know what the what the ac exact number is of how many people are following my my show uh, so this is why I, I believe that uh, this new evidence that was presented by Scott Roeder is not really uh, it hasn't made a dent it hasn't been talked about in the mainstream <clears throat> Not yet, uh, but uh, as I said when I was initially talking about this in, in, in over the last couple of weeks, I, I talked about how it's going to take time to bleed out, But uh, and I think that's probably the right course, but at the same time, I am trying to get the word out. Uh, I just want to let, let people know, and uh, I want to talk about some of the comments I received uh, recently. Actually, I received one yesterday from uh, Jeremy Casper uh, on YouTube, and uh, this, is what he, this is what he wrote to me. He says, uh, Jim, I am so frustrated with this case that I feel like I'm banging my head against the wall. The right people connections are not being made. The most elite investigative journalist and anchor that could push for disclosure on this is George Knapp, based right there in Las Vegas. He tried contacting the family several times and they would not get back to him. Kudos to you, Jim and Scott and Julia, for investigating this and providing evidence. Of course, he's talking about Scott Roeder and Julia June, who was alerted to me, alerted me about this uh, alien behind the fence, and that's you know that caused the snowball. Uh, that was part of that snowball effect that we had. But anyway, uh, continuing, he says, and I believe you should have millions of subs, but the reality is you only have a couple thousand. Disclosure is not going to happen through this channel. You need to get this evidence and proof sent to George Knapp immediately via certified mail. Angel, if you ever read this, please get in touch with George Knapp. Why on earth has this family declined all interviews except they allow Sherman, the Sherman YouTuber to interview them and he ends up asking all the wrong questions and talking over them because he is not a good interviewer? He had the chance of a lifetime to recreate the entire scenario and go through each of the time-stamped events and he failed to do so and ended up playing with their dogs instead. This whole thing is so frustrating to me. George Knapp could even cover this evidence on his weaponized podcast with Jeremy Corbell. George has been pushing for disclosure for 40 years and this is and is this the one that originally broke Bob Lazar and is the one who that originally broke the Bob Lazar story to the world and popular popularized Area 51. He's probably a 10 minute drive from this family's home and yet they are not connected and not talking. George would not come over to clown you and make a mockery of this case. He would vindicate you and get this evidence to the world and probably nobody will see this comment, so I continue to bang my head on a wall. Well, uh, there's going to be some people that are going to hear this comment because I just read, <laughs> read it on the podcast, Jer uh, Jeremy. I really appreciate it because uh, I just want to point out, I, 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 I don't hold any fault against uh, Sherman whatsoever. I mean, I, I think he's someone who was interested in this, and I'm glad if it wasn't for him, actually, this snowball effect would have never happened. Uh, and I, uh, so I, I, I appreciate that he actually contacted the family without his interview. We, we wouldn't know, uh, for instance, that the government is still investigating this according to Sherman. So that's one thing that that's why I talked about it because of that interview. And then one thing led to another. Now Sherman has over a million subscribers and, uh, uh, and I just want I, I did reach out to him. So, so I just want to let people know. And this is what I wrote back to Jeremy. I said, a few days ago, I called KLAS in Las Vegas, and I was told to send my information in an e email form. I sent a long email explaining everything and provided links to pertinent videos. I never received a call or return email. I have also reached out to Sherman this morning. That was yesterday, Saturday morning, in the hopes he could connect me to the family. I have yet to hear back from him. This is not over yet. I know what we have here, and it will 
it'll, it will eventually get out to the world. Um, so that's that was uh, some of the comments that went back and forth. We, we continued back and forth a little bit more, but I wanted to point that out that uh, I am trying. There's other people I have, I have reached out to. I've actually reached out to more people today. Uh, now KLAS, uh, that's where that's that's where George Knapp. Uh, he, that's where he's been an anchor. He's been a news reporter for KLAS for a long time, and uh, I did send. I called him up. But I was told I need to send it through an email, and all everyone in the newsroom there will get to see it. Uh, maybe they saw it and they don't uh, think that there's anything to this. Maybe they just don't believe it. Maybe it's too far fetched for them. I don't know, but uh, I am trying, and I've also sent out a very detailed letter to email to Sherman. And I told him about this. I, t- I explained how everything went down and how everything happened. And I was hoping that he could arrange uh, it to contact uh, the the family, Angel and Joshua, perhaps. And maybe uh, maybe we could. I'd like to talk to them uh, personally, the family, and uh, and present the inf- the findings, the scientific evidence uh, that Scott Roeder has assembled. I'd like to show them that and see what their comments are. I think that. Uh, there's more to talk about with this case, so I, it's not like for lack of trying. I am trying to get the word out, and uh, actually today, uh, on my YouTube channel, I, I actually post. I actually wrote uh, a little uh, something about this whole thing, and I actually posted it to Reddit on two different Reddit uh, subreddits. I posted it on uh, UFO Reddit as as well as uh, one of uh, UFO B, which has a UF, uh, YouTube channel as well. It's one of my favorite YouTube channels. They show a lot, a lot of uh, great UFO videos, and I posted it on there, uh, trying to get this information out, explaining every, to everyone what we have here. Uh, again, I know that there's some people out there that are, aren't accepting this, but here's the here's the issue that I have here. I have two different experts that are experts in video analysis, and they're telling us that there is something there, okay? So I, I know that there's some people out there who are upset with this. They're upset that I'm to keep talking about it. I've received comments like this as, as, as well from some followers. Some people are sick of hearing about this, but... Uh, I, I have to keep talking about this. Uh, I mean, I don't want to talk about it every single day, of course. Uh, I, in fact, uh, just uh, in my previous podcast, I had a great guest on, Jack Connor, and we pretty much uh, discussed the Peruvian mummies. So we stuck to that for the most part during, during that episode. Jack was a great guest, and I received a lot of great comments on that interview, and I'm very happy for that, too. Thank you very much. Uh, so... Uh, and I and this week coming up, I have another great guest going to come on here, and that's going to be Dr. Keith Taylor. He's a former uh, New York uh, Police Department officer, as well as a, he was the assistant commissioner at the New York City Corrections Department. And right now he's a professor at the John Jay College of Criminal Justice, and he's going to be coming on uh, in midweek. Uh, we're going to talk about his efforts working with uh, UAP Med. Uh, they're talking about incorporating unidentified anomalous phenomena incidents into first responder policies, procedures, and protocols. We're going to talk about that among a whole myriad of other topics. We're going to get into all of it, and I'm really excited uh, to have uh, Dr. Keith Taylor coming on. But at the same time, I just want to say I think it's important that uh, I talk about this. I got to beat the drum here. I mean, until somebody could, if if, if this, if say if Scott Roeder is wrong, I don't think he is. I don't think that there's going to be anyone out there that's going to be able to disprove his findings. But <laughs> until someone steps up and says otherwise, uh, oh, this is what we have, and this is the proof. I believe that this is the absolute end all evidence, as I've been talking about. But anyway, this is the thing that I. This is the. Uh, the little essay that I posted on to Reddit today and uh, also on YouTube. I posted it on two subreddits as well as YouTube, and I just want to go through this. I wrote this. Disclosure of the reality that there is some type of non-human intelligent presence on Earth occurred on April 2nd, 2024, but most people are completely unaware of it. I recently ran a series of podcasts on my YouTube and Spotify channels, Quirk Zone and UFO Extraterrestrial Reality, respectively, presenting what I believe is indisputable proof of an alien presence on Earth. It involves the encounter a Las Vegas family claimed to have with beings in their backyard just before midnight on April 30th, 2023 and during the early morning hours of May 1st, 2023. This case has been discussed ad nauseum by many news outlets last year, but an aspect of video filmed by the Kenmore family has recently been examined by crime scene reconstruction expert Scott Roeder, and he has been able to prove scientifically that there were non-human intelligent beings in their backyard that night. Roeder, a video expert, Expert, along with his assistant, Louis Castillo, who holds a doctorate in computer animation, used industry standard advanced motion and light tracking and vector AI software to conduct their analysis and reported that they now have proof that the family was telling the truth. 
In the cell phone footage filmed by Contra Kenmore as her two sons, Angel and Joshua, and husband Bobby, attempted to enter the backyard, Rotor has identified two beings. The first being can be seen moving toward the three family members, which caused them to backstep out of the yard. However, the really amazing part of the footage occurs just before they exit the yard. A being appears above the fence, and for a few brief milliseconds, its face can be seen. Rotor and Castillo have determined that the being has the ability to cloak itself using some kind of advanced technology. Rotor said that in the area of the footage where the being appears, 66% of the pixels are missing and that there is no earthly reason for that to have happened. Rotor and Castillo have also determined that the cell phone video was not tampered with, meaning no special effects were added later on. Still images captured from the video that shows the being's face matches exactly what was described by members of the Kenmore family when interviewed by Inside Edition last September. And here's a direct quote from Scott Rotor. He says, I think that the evidence at this particular time with what we've seen here is proof that these entities, both in the background and in the foreground behind the fence, are real. They're here. This is not a fake. This is not a fraud. I guarantee it 100%. These two items, these two beings, are in the real world environment with the Kenmore family. That's a fact. It's an absolute fact. 100% beyond a reasonable doubt, these beings are there. Interestingly, Jan Maccabee, the wife of famous optical physicist Bruce Maccabee, snapped a cell phone picture of an apparent alien creature using cloaking technology while she was bow hunting alone in Ohio back in 2010. This case was discussed during the final segment of the documentary Missing 411 The Hunted. Jan had said the being looked like a large piece of saran wrap as it moved from one tree to another. When Bruce examined the picture she snapped, it was a blurry mess. Amazingly, the resolution of the picture had been reduced to an impossible 528 by 400 pixels, a resolution the camera did not offer. The highest resolution offered by the cell phone camera was 1600 by 1200. The difference between 528 by 400 and 1600 by 1200 is 66%. I think there might be a connection. Additionally, Rotor has determined that the object that fell from the sky that night was not a meteor. Dash cam footage from a police vehicle he obtained shows the object under infrared had no heat signal. Furthermore, ring camera footage also captured an un unnatural oscillating sound as the object fell toward the ground. The new evidence confirms that there is a non-human intelligence on Earth. Rotor is so confident of his findings that he challenges anyone considered a qualified expert witness in video analysis to examine the evidence themselves. He is certain they will reach the same conclusions. Because my channels have small followings, about 7,000 on Spotify and under 3,000 on YouTube, word of these scientific findings has not yet ascended to the mainstream. Attempts are ongoing to obtain comments from top names in the UFO community, but so far no progress has been made. Debunker Mick West refused to consider, consider the evidence and instead resorted to a no-research-research research approach, stating simply that the object was a meteor and that the being above the fence was a shadow. This contradicts the findings of of Rotor and Castillo, who are adamant that a non-human entity with advanced cloaking technology does in fact appear behind a fence and that they have the scientific evidence to prove it. West, during an appearance last September on Inside Edition that reviewed the Las Vegas case, speculated that what the Kenmore family members saw were merely raccoons or coyotes. He apparently never bothered to review the video evidence and has made up his mind without conducting any scientific research. Rotor, meanwhile, believes it's time for the world to start asking other questions. Now the question is, who are they, where are they from, and what do they want, he said. This is where the conversation goes after this presentation. So that was... Uh, uh, the little essay that I posted on Reddit today as well as on my channel here. I'm trying to get the word out. I have been contacting other people. I've sent out email messages to other big names in the UFO community and so far have received nothing in response. Uh, Dr. Keith Taylor, uh, he is aware of what I have, uh, of the evidence that I've presented. He, he uh, intends to talk about it when I, when I bring him on the show later this week. Uh, and I think it's going to be a very interesting discussion. I mean, you know, one thing that crosses my mind, you know, you, for one thing, uh, you know, and I've been talking to Scott Roeder about this. We still don't have the evidence. There was some body cam footage potentially that uh, was was fil that was uh, that filmed these creatures possibly that from the police officer that went in and went in to investigate the backyard. 
we were talking about filing a Freedom of Information Act request to get that footage. Maybe there's some more information in, in that footage that uh, we could use uh, to further uh, show that there was something there. I think we already have the evidence. I mean, again, we have two different people, two different experts in, in, in video analysis telling us that there's something there and that they're using cloaking technology. How could you, how could you say that this isn't the end-all proof when you have that? Now, no one has yet stepped up to the plate and tried to, to refute this except for Mick West who says that he didn't, he, he's just saying it's a meteor and it's a shadow without even doing any sort of scientific investigation. So that doesn't count. Uh, we, we need other people, other, other uh, experts, uh, like Scott Roeder talked about. Then, then that, uh, that's a different story then. But I have a feeling that this evidence is going to stand uh, because I don't think that someone like Scott Roeder is going to put something out, out there like that unless he was confident uh, that he was correct. And I think he is correct. Uh, and again, it's interesting that the the 66 percent diminishment of pixels uh, pretty much is the same what was what that Bruce Maccabee discovered when his wife took that picture of a similar cloaking uh, a similar similar being take using cloaking technology. Somehow that that image turned out to be 66 percent less than the camera's resolution. So I, uh, I I think that there's something to this, and that's why I wouldn't have called it Vindication Day on April 2nd when I presented that video if I didn't believe that. I I, I felt on the Friday night before that, the, in the very end of March, when Scott Roeder contacted me and started showing me some of his work, uh, some of the discoveries that he made, I knew right then and there that this was a done deal. I mean, you, there's something there, right? There is something there. And this is the proof. And I think at some point it's going to uh, it's going to bleed out to more people. I think uh, first we try to get it out to as many people in the UFO community as possible. That's why I posted this stuff on Reddit. Of course, am I going to get hate? You gu I guarantee it. I guarantee it. You know, every time you when somebody uh, is close to the mark, this is what you get. You get slapped across the face. And that's fine, but at the same time, I have been getting a lot of uh, positive comments from people, and I'm very appreciative of it, very appreciative. Uh, in fact, I'm going to uh, scoot over to uh, uh, Spotify for a second. I just want to uh, talk about some of the comments there. There was one comment I couldn't use because there was a curse word in it. Uh, I, I, you know, I, uh, The way Spotify works is unlike YouTube. Like You only get a small little, you can't, you, you can only write a few sentences and, and that's all the space they give you. And then I have to look at the, at the comment or, or I, you know, I, I make the decision on whether to publish it or not. And I didn't want to publish this one, even though I really liked the comment, but it had a, a curse word in there. And I try to keep this family friendly, this show, you know, like Brady, like I, like I, I want to, you know, if the Brady bunch is on a trip to, uh, to see the Grand Canyon and they're listening to a podcast as they're traveling, I want, I want all the kids to be able to hear the same thing. I don't want that, the, uh, 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 you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? I, I want it to be clean, you know, so so families could listen to this because I, I'm trying to do that. I'm, I really am trying to work to, to do that on the show. I, I, I want it to be family friendly. I don't want curse words in it. But I want to say David Carrion, it was a great comment. This is what he wrote. He says, it's funny how no one noticed the shadow on the corner. My wife noticed it, noticed it the first time we saw it when it first came out. I told her about what you, was, you guys found. She screamed, I blanking knew it. She, she blanking knew it was there. That's what she knew. Thank you, David, for that comment. I'm sorry I couldn't publish it, but uh, thank you very much for the comment. I thought it was important to share. Uh, and I've received a lot of other comments all over YouTube, all over Spotify. I'm going to go through some of the Spotify comments. This is... This is uh, uh, from the from the episode interview with Julia June, who helped bust the Vegas alien case wide open. These are some of the comments I received from people. Uh, here was from Pohara. He said, he, "Pohara says just confirms what UFO buffs have known for decades: the debunkers will go kicking and screaming, refuting any evidence." Fred says, "We need more folks like her, like Julia June, to be brave and offer help in our quest to thwart the control group and their CIA goons." Andrew Goldsmith writes, Thanks for a great episode, Mr. Quirk. Also, thanks for your persistence, Julia. During the part where you slow down the video at the 1132 mark, it looks like the shadow encroaches around the fence. Mario Cincomani says, I think we should ask the family members if the video was given first to any government official or else maybe those missing pixels were blurred out and in the original vid, one could see the alien clearly. Uh, Brian says, Jim, when the crowd goes one way, you go the other. You will, you will be proven right in the end. Stick with it. 
Susie says, it would be great if you could focus less on the people who don't believe and start talking to those of us that do. Well, I'm going to just point this out. I, you, you're right. I do talk a lot about the debunkers, but see, I, I, I view myself as a giant club. I'm trying to smash this whole thing up already. I'm tired of this cover-up. I'm tired of people uh, making fun of this. And I'm just, I, I, I figure, I look at my channel as a big giant club just smashing through all the nonsense. That's what I look at it as, right? I, I think you need to talk about these debunkers. You need to show them that they're wrong. And you need to wake some people up. I mean, there's a lot of people that believe these debunkers when they're not even doing any real scientific research. I understand. I don't like talking about them either. But I think it's important to show when they're wrong. And in this case, so, I mean, I... I I uh, posted some things on Twitter about this when I first started, uh, when the story first started breaking. I've been posting things on Twitter, and I received, uh, eventually I received some comments. I see some comments from Mick West who's saying, oh, it's just a shadow and it's just a meteor. That's it. He didn't even look at it. He's not even looking at this stuff. But yet he has all these t tens of thousands of followers. They, they, they believe everything he says. He's not even doing any scientific research. It needs to be pointed out. I'm sorry. But uh, I, I have to do this. But I do appreciate the comment, and I hate talking about it myself. At some point here, I, like I said recently, I'm not going to be talking. I'm done. I'm, I'm moving on. Again, these people are like flat earthers at this point to me. So this is, it is going to be changing soon. Uh, the Great Mysteries Podcast writes, Great video, I believe. Uh, Novosri writes, Would the 66% uh, pixel reduction explain why every video of UFOs are also blurred due to the same technology used as in this case? That's a great question. I wonder. I wonder if this is why a lot of pictures of UFOs are blurry because they're using some sort of a cloaking technology every time they, they show up. Maybe that's, what, maybe that's what's going on. Uh, I guess we'll find out once the scientific community gets involved. You would think the scientific community is going to be very interested in this once they see this evidence. Uh, Doug Alexander writes, The whole Vegas series is great, Jim. More to come with you and Scott. You better believe it, Doug. Thank you very much for the comment. Uh, uh, this big long number, uh, this is that, that's their name, 122-599-3449 says, Great interview, very smart and interesting guest. Thanks. Uh, and then another long number and letter uh, uh, commenter says, no point, it'll be a target on your back. Be careful, brother. You know what? I'm not worried about that. I mean, I was worried about it when I first was publishing this, that there's going to be a target on my back. But why would it be? I mean, what does it matter? I mean, I mean, this was a whole grassroots effort. I mean, this starts with uh, this starts with Sherman, basically. I mean, this just starts with actually, let's put it this way. This starts with the family, actually. This starts with Doug Papa. This has been building to this. This is a whole bunch of people are responsible for this. It's not me. It's not anybody. It's Scott. It's not Scott Roeder. It's not just Julia June. It's everybody. It's everybody was kept their focus on this. And a lot of us thought that there was something more to this case. And I was one of them. And a lot of other people were too. And that, and it, and this has been a grassroots effort. It's just that it happened to be my channel and also Scott Roeder's channel that f finally uh, figured out the, what the, that there is scientific evidence to show people with regard to this case, uh, as we all know now. And then Jamie Darger says, uh, just keep doing your thing. The hateful responses speak volumes. You, you, amen. I think this, I, I believe that too. The hateful responses, uh, they do. Uh, speak volumes I, I i there's only one <laughs> what else could you say about that uh i mean i don't understand that i mean how am i not supposed to talk about this i mean when someone steps forward and tell and provides scientific evidence for this vegas case I, i'm not supposed to talk about it am i supposed to just pretend it's not there or it's not doesn't exist i mean that's 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 asinine and then uh, for the episode uh math behind vegas alien cloaking tech matches similar 2010 case uh there was some i've received a lot of other great comments too from uh, uh people uh here's one from kyle m says who's to say they they are crashing maybe they are biological or robotic probes ai etc maybe they are invading taking over would you declare shape-shifting beings to the public serious blank is coming yeah 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 i don't know i mean that's I mean, it's all speculation on you know what what is the object that came down see i like to talk to the family about that object angel saw that thing whatever it was and uh coming down what did it look like did he see exactly what it looked like what is exact shape and what happened to it later on did they hear anything later on taking off or anything there's a lot of questions here that still need to be asked to these family members i believe uh and here's a, a comment from Let Free Your UAP. It says here, The Confessionals podcast had someone investigate this and had come to believe there was Department of Defense involved and the property is strange and have been watched for a long time by the government. 
Okay, that's interesting. Uh, that's something I guess I'll have to check out at some point. Sean Caitlin, uh, Sean Catlin says, "Thanks, mate, for not letting this story die. This is an important case. Case, lots of disinformation, but you have a good look at this. Uh, something went for sure." Uh, Pohara says, "Great job." Jim and Scott, you proved the reality of alien beings, 100%. Be proud. Also, Scott nailed that JFK was no doubt assassinated because he was going to spill it about aliens among us. Now, uh, I, I, I believe that Scott Roeder believes that. I have not made up my mind on that. I, I, I'd have to do more research on that. I, don't, I do know that that's a possibility, and I wouldn't doubt it. Uh, 99 Anis says, This case reminds me of one in a small town, Jardinopolis, Brazil. Some friends saw the same in an empty lot and stood there for hours to try to understand what it was. Uh, that's another thing I have to look into at some point here. Uh, Brian says, Great job on that. Thoroughly interesting. Did scientists attend the scene, radiation, etc.? Treat it like a crime scene. Well, you know, it's we're, we're how many months uh, removed now from this from this incident? I mean, it's uh, 11 months ago. Or it's April uh so uh, it was. It started on the last day of April last year and ended on May first, uh, uh, early morning hours of May first last year. I don't know. Um, what we're gonna see. Uh, I don't know. I, I. I mean, is there anything left there? There is one thing left there that I do want to investigate. That needs investigation. That needs scientific investigation. And that is the writing that's on in the back of the house on the concrete. What is that all about? The the, the family told Sherman that it's not chalk. Whatever it is, was it some kind of message to somebody or something? What what is that all about? There needs to be more investigation into this case. Scientific investigation. I'm not a scientist, so I don't understand what that could possibly mean. But that's why scientists need to get involved in this already this is this is that there should be no more stigma now this it's over now it should be over uh john gulliver writes please keep going stay to the path you're taking for it's the straight path to the truth wing says hey jim does the sound of the falling craft match up to the sounds that you have experienced in the past and of course i was uh, he's uh, wing is referring to the sound that i heard uh in the 1977 when there was an alien being in the, in the room uh, and i saw its hand uh its three-fingered hand a three-digit hand uh and it was just the whole time when it was there there was this elect electronic humming sound no it does not sound like the same the oscillating sound of the object as it comes down from the sky is not the same as what i heard that night that the sound that i heard never never get never led up at all it was just a, a constant hum like an electronic humming sound or like bees like you know the whole time it never it was just very strange and scary that's all i could say about that i never heard anything like it since uh <clears throat> Fred says, confirms what I figured out 40 years ago. Yeah, a lot of us, you know, Fred, have figured this out a long time ago, and we're sick of being told that uh, there's no evidence to it. We have the evidence now. It's right here. Uh, there's no one here to step up. There's no one to challenge this yet. Where's someone to challenge it? Scott Roeder says he's waiting for someone to challenge it. That's what we need, someone to come challenge it. Let's see, if they, let's see what they, come on, bring it. Let's, let's have it already. Let's hear it. Uh... Fubua says, please put a compilation video together of the original video, your first collaboration with Scott, your second collaboration with Scott, and then finally this information regarding the pixel reduction. I Well, I did, since that, I did have another video. I, I, I don't know if that uh, meets the requirement that you're saying here, but uh, uh, I'm sure this will be ta I'll be talking about this more over time. Rob Alger says, really an interesting episode, Jim. I think this will become one of the main events in UAP UFO history. Yeah, it might. It just might. It might just become one of those main events in UFO history. I think it should be, actually. I mean, this is the, if you have people telling you this is this is absolute 100% proof, Scott Roeder's guaranteeing it. This guy is a professional. He's been doing this stuff, uh, investigating crimes for over 30 years, reconstructing crime scenes, testifying in court. This guy is a professional. He's, he's out there working right now on a job. He's doing stuff all the time. Not like some of these debunkers who are sitting in their armchairs, you know, just pontificating. This guy is out there doing stuff, and he has a team of people, professionals working for him too, like Louis Castillo. Uh, David Richardson says, Angel and family are vindicated. I'm a believer, scientist, and realist. There were beings there, but quite a stretch to go to extraterrestrials. Seems like the cops didn't even bother to look around back there. 
Uh, that I did talk about this comment before. Uh, I did mention it, uh, but now I'm just reading the whole thing. Yeah, I, like I said before, I, I don't know if it is a stretch. I mean, why? I don't know why it would be a stretch to say they're extraterrestrial. I can't prove that they are, but I don't think it's a stretch to say that they are. Uh, we still need more scientific evidence to prove that some of these beings here that the people encounter are extraterrestrial. I think there's a good chance that they could be. Uh, but you, in a way, you're right. I guess it is a, you know, but I, I still think that it's extra. I think in the end, we're going to find out that these these beings are coming from other planets. Um, and then it seems like the cops didn't even bother to look around back there. Uh, well, they did go back there, uh, but we don't have that footage. I, we don't know what happened there. Uh, William says, unfortunately, just another day to the skeptics. And that multiple footsteps described could have been high-tech audio to make it sound like more aliens than there actually was, thus causing more chaos. And that's an interesting comment. Very interesting. That's a, we all, all we could do is speculate. And that's a very in interesting comment because... You know, uh, uh, one of the things Angel said, like right when that thing came down, the next thing he heard, everything was blurry. And the next thing he heard, it sounded like thousands of footsteps. Was it just some sort of pretend audio to make it sound like there was a whole bunch of beings there? Well, I don't know. That's a good, good question. Again, we need scientists looking into this. Uh, and then uh, M. Mobius says, missing 411 predator incident was what I immediately thought of when I saw Scott's cloaking analysis. Clearly, this is tech they've used to hide in disguise from humans. I think, yes, I do. I, I don't think it's a coincidence uh, that if you look at that incident from 2010 involving Jan McAvee, right, uh, she takes a picture and it happens to be the pixel uh, resolution is, is, is completely... Uh, it's something that doesn't even exist on the camera. It's not even offered by the camera. It's, and it's 66%. And when and when Scott and Louis Castile looked, examined the shadow portion of that, uh, of the Kenmore's video, it's reduced 60, 66% of the pixels are just missing. It sounds like the same kind of tech we're looking at in both cases. And then Hawk says, could it be that our 3D technology cannot absorb or obtain what may be higher dimensions? Keep up the great work. You and Scott Roder together is also a treat. Thanks a lot, Hawk. I appreciate that comment. I, yeah, I, I mean, people say that these things could be uh, from another dimension, maybe. Maybe that's what's going on. Again, we need the scientific community in on this. That's the whole issue here. <laughs> Once we get the scientific community involved... Uh, uh, I, I think, you know, th then we find out we get more answers. But this is the case. Right now, there are people, we have two professionals out there, two video professionals telling us that there's something there. And, and you see the face. There's a face there. I mean, the face is as, as described by the Kenmore family for those few brief milliseconds. There's no doubt about it. This is the evidence, folks. This is, I, I talked about this initially on, on April 2nd, and I, as far as I'm concerned, that, that's the end of it. That disclosure is here. We know now for a fact we have the evidence. If anybody ever tells you, hey, you don't have any proof for that, you just point to this evidence. I, I actually put a video together, a short video, uh, right after the Vindication Day video, where I just have all of Scott's evidence all compiled in one little nice little 12 minute video there. I have that only, it's only for, for people listening on Spotify, I, I have that on the YouTube channel because I felt it would be wrong to just post that on the Spotify because it was mostly a visual thing. But I will leave the link in the description uh, uh, in, in, uh, in, for this so you can check it out if you haven't seen it. I just put together all of the evidence, compiled it all in one little package and then put it out there. Yes, it's over. As I, like I, I've been saying, I said it before and I'll say it again. There's no one yet to challenge this. And, and there are people, I'll tell you this. As of this moment, there has been a, quite a few people I have contacted. Now, some of them I just contacted, so I'm going to give them a chance to respond. But some I have not received responses from some big names in out there, and and, and it's it's I can I'm, it's concerning in a way. I can tell you that it's very concerning. Like, it's like what? Do they want to keep going with this narrative that they don't know, where everyone's wondering if it's real or not? Is that what they want to do? Are they scared about what what might happen if they tell if they start getting behind this? Right? What's going on? I like to know. Inquiring minds want to know. But anyway, I just want to say, uh, uh, I'm going to wrap it up here. I just want to say, I, I, I want to thank all the people out there who have been supportive. Uh, and to the people who are still not convinced, I, I don't know what to say to you other than, uh, I, what am I supposed to do? Pretend that these experts aren't experts and their evidence doesn't count? Is that what you want? That doesn't make any sense to me. That doesn't make sense to me at all. Why don't you go find your own experts, right? And have them tell you, see if they could tell you something different. That's all I got to say. But I want to say to the people who have been supportive and even some of the people who are still not there, there's been some nice comments even from people who are still uh, not 100% convinced and that's fine. I just don't like when I receive hateful comments. There's sometimes some comments I've received 
Uh, and I, you know, it's just, come on. I mean, come on. Take them someplace else. Don't, why even bother saying it if you're going to say something like that? Uh, but anyway, I want to say thank you to all the people who have been very supportive. I am trying to get the word out there. I'm trying to let more people in the UFO community know about this evidence. I'm doing what I can. And, uh, and I will uh, provide updates as time goes on. But anyway, I want to say thank you all for joining me. Until next time.